It's All happening. Right. Look All at right. that. Okay. That right there is Paul Barker. We are in front of Metro tonight, <laughs> night four of Cold Waves. Uh, the re Paul Barker, the returning champ. Of yes. Cold waves every year. <laughs> yeah, your presence is felt here. Uh, we may know you. I, I keep getting beat down, but coming back for more. It's car con carne. Let's eat in the car. It's car con carne. And now here's the star of our show, James Van People may know you uh, from your time in ministry. People may know you from production work, appearing with a million different bands. You are here tonight on stage at Cold Waves uh, before Pig and Filter doing a DJ set, right? Well, I mean, that's loosely a DJ set, yes. Basically, what I'm doing is is, is a live mixing of a bunch of ministry tracks that I've uh, remixed. So it's like, it's called Min Dub Sound System because uh, I'm doing dub mixing. So dub mixing, like in the Adrian Sherwood way of fucking stuff up. You know, it's still going to be super fucking heavy, but so you know, just, there's nothing dubby, but there's nothing pot smoking about it. <laughs> so to help me understand this, you're taking just bits and pieces of the actual, like, sessions and chopping them up and reconfiguring them on stage. Is that how that works? Well, uh, no, yes and no. Um, so I've already remixed the tracks. I have stems, which means that I have like a track that's all kick drum. I have a track that's all snare. I have track that's all bass. And then I have, you know, a bunch of other like vocal samples and stuff like this, you know, and guitars and, and all of this. So I have multi-tracks coming in to the board okay and i'm mixing those so this is like real mad scientist shit going on stage. well i guess i mean for me it's not uh, you know whatever it comes second nature but that's only because of the amount of time that i spent in the studio see and it's interesting and you're just doing ministry stuff tonight yes exactly my perception and clearly it was it was wrong my perception was you had kind of distanced yourself from your ministry past well it's true i did i mean in this in as much as um you know um uh, it was no longer an active part of my um, artistic expression. You know, mm -hmm. I have other things to do. Um, so, in fact, what happened was last year when I finished and, and released and then toured on the, a new Lead into Gold record, um, suddenly I felt like... <laughs> um, <laughs> There's someone taking a picture through the windshield. Some, suddenly Paul I says you're number suddenly, one. Say, suddenly I realized um, that um, you know, okay, uh, um, I'm I'm comfortable. I've um, expressed myself. It's you know, it's as solid an expression as anything I did before. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's okay if I do some ministry stuff, you know, because honestly, it's like I don't want to just be known for being, you know, a part of ministry. Of I mean, I love it. That's not. I'm not. You know, this is, I'm not divorcing myself from right. that. You know, it's just, um, you know, I have more to offer. I feel like I have more to offer. And it, and, and I until I actually offer more than, you know, it's like I don't want to just rest on that. You For know? sure. I get that. Yeah. I, I mean, I super appreciate, you know, the love and, and you know, support and everything. So, uh, so I'm, I'm not, you know, so that's fine. I'm, are you and Alan talking terms? We are. How recent is that? Last weekend. Shut up, really? Yeah. Last weekend. Yeah. I mean, I talked to him as of the beginning of last year um, because 30-year uh, anniversary of Land of Rape and Honey, you know, it's like uh, Jason Pettigrew from Alternative Press. He's like, hey, man, you know, you, you got to do something you know, with this. I'm like, why do I have to do anything with it? You know, like right. I, I haven't thought about this in, you know, whatever, 12 years right, or whatever. Right. He's like, no, it's 30-year anniversary. You got to do something. Like, okay, well, here, let, you know, let me give you Liz's, you know, Al's girlfriend let me, let me give you you know her number you can contact them and so she contacted me and then i'm like all right well i need to talk to al i don't you know yeah i don't want to talk to third party you know yeah, i, I want to talk to al you know and see what's up so i talked to him a few times and then i actually uh, visited him last weekend in la he lives outside of la was there well actually he lives in the city limits but it's a huge motherfucking city so yeah was there a man hug was there a what a man hug like Sure, of course. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. That, that's good news for... Well, I mean, you know... <laughs> yeah. Al it's, is it's who great. he is. And so, mm -hmm. in other words, you know, whatever. The door's open. So, we'll see what happens. I love hearing that. And I don't want to linger on ministry because, of course, that's not exclusively who you are. But just to stay in ministry for one more question. Yes. 
what do you think? What album from your time is the most emblematic or the best example? Is it Psalm 69? Is it Rape and Honey? What, what album to you stands out as the best example of that period? Well, for me, I think Filth Pig is my most satisfying, uh, not mine, but is the most satisfying record. Um, no, I had read that that was torturous to make. I, I had read that. It was that, quite difficult, yes. Yeah. Um, they were all difficult to make, honestly. <laughs> um, you know, of course, there are you know, many reasons for that and, you know, whatever, immaturity and then, you know, hindsight and all that kind of bullshit, you know. So, so you know, we, we, you live, you're, you're just doing it, you know, it's like, well, you don't have time to step back and say, well, this is really ridiculous. You know, it's like, well, no, this, these are the terms, you know yeah. what I mean? You either do it or you don't, you right. know? And so you, you know, you do your best and everybody's involved and everybody's contributing and everybody's contributing to the positive aspects as well as the negative aspects, you know? And so when I say everybody, I mean myself included, you know, so it's not like it, there's, you know, there's no finger pointing or whatever. It was very difficult to make and you know whatever of course our lives are you, if you allow yourself to wallow in yeah. kind of the what ifs you know like why you know why didn't I you know what if would have could have should have kind of stuff but you can't you know it's like you just so let me just say one other thing about this idea everyone all the time that I was working with Al everyone was always you know bitching and moaning about how long shit took and you know whatever blah 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 it's like well fuck you you do it your way we're doing it our way you know like if you don't like what we're doing I'm fine with that you yeah, know you so. weren't the Beatles in the 1960s doing an album every year you had your own pace and artistic tempo that's right exactly sure sure I, I will say I was talking with a friend uh, earlier tonight the fall really is kind of a dark, the fall intense. Is badass. Oh I mean, you God. know, that record has so many super great songs on it. It Fuck does. Yeah. All right. So, moving forward, yes. moving the, the Paul Barker ball forward. Yeah. Um, after tonight, and I want to talk a little bit about Cold Waves too. But after tonight, where do we find Paul Barker? Musically. Musically. Recording. Producing. Well, okay. So yeah. So you know, um, I. Finished a Let Into Gold record last year. Um, you know, it was, you know, kind of a hearkening to the whatever, late 80s, early 90s kind of sound. Mm -hmm. So I've since written uh, a new batch of songs. Um, I need to finish those after I get off. Actually, tonight's the last show of this short run. So I'm going to finish a new record of my own. And uh, I don't the last know. one was five or six longer than that, right? Seven years ago, the last I mean, Paul Barker uh, record. Aside from the Lead into Gold yes. record, well, yeah, I did that. Um, I did a bunch of music for the Fix film, right. you know, to accompany that. Um, yeah, and then well, I worked on that Maleco record with Chris, uh, Chris Connolly. Um, you know, Who's did, here? did he's some other, yeah, he's one here. of the patron saints of Chicago <laughs> right, and industrial exactly. music. I'm so happy to see him. Um, anyway, he so, does light up a room. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> Sorry, because so. he's a queen, you know. <laughs> so yeah. Um, anyway, so um, yeah, I have some new material to finish, and I don't know, you know, exactly what's going on with that. I hope to finish it by the end of the year. I'm pretty far along. You're, you're one of those guys who's Something always working. Tell. Who's always well? I mean, so I have you know Maleco Heavy Industry. It's it's a full time job, yeah. and um, you know so um, my music making is on top of that, and right. so um, you know I have to force myself to do it. And, Wait, so you're at a point where your music's kind of a side hustle to Maleco? Well, I wouldn't call it a hustle necessarily, um, but it is definitely. That's what the kids say. Yes. <laughs> um. Yeah, uh, I mean, unfortunately. From my artistic side, yes, Maleco mm -hmm. is my primary focus. That's awesome. However, you know, my business partner is super uh, supportive, and so, like for instance, last year I was gone for seven weeks on tour. You know, like wh whatever, you know, whatever you want to do, it's fine. So, mm -hmm. um, I have to balance my uh, need for uh, creative fulfillment with uh, need for you know whatever keeping the business afloat absolutely you know? all right and i know you've got to get on stage i yeah. don't want to monopolize your time uh, let's talk quickly about cold waves yes. you, like i said you are a returning performer to this stage the word that keeps coming up you know the bands i've talked to so far over the course of this week and the word yes. that keeps coming up is community 
Yes. Right. And I mean, just talking about Chris Connolly walking mm-hmm. in the room. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I saw Martin Atkins earlier. Like, mm-hmm. there's a legit community around these sounds, this scene, and it's pretty cool to. Just, I'm not in it. I watching all you coexist is fa- mm-hmm. it's just it's fantastic to watch oh fantastic yeah i mean i'm happy to hear it it's it's you know it's 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 a couple of things like all right there's a bunch of old you know fogies getting together you know and reminiscing or whatever you know okay so there's that aspect of it but i think really um you know the idea of the uh fundraising aspect of it you know which is all important um i don't know kind of kind of gets pushed aside to the um, nostalgic aspect of sure. it. Um, which is okay, but I'm super thrilled that there's, you know, young bands, you yeah. know, still, you know, kicking it out and, and they're able to join, you know, in the uh, in the shows. Yeah. I'm thrilled that uh, Jason is able to do, uh, Jason Novak is mm-hmm. able to do Cold Waves LA, Cold Waves New York. We also did a Cold Wave show in uh, San Francisco this year. So, that, yeah. That's ambitious, uh, and that's not, putting together one show is hard to do. Coordinating talent and backline and all that stuff, being able to do it in multiple cities, the fact that they've come this far with it, it's pretty extraordinary. Oh my God, isn't it though? Yeah, it's 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 incredible. Yeah. Uh, let's talk a little bit beyond the community about yes. the the importance, the meaning behind tonight. I mean, you being a musician, being in a world where you've seen addiction, you've seen people hit lows. What does it mean to be on the stage year after year and kind of spread the message that people are have your back and people yeah i mean you know okay so i don't feel like a survivor i feel like uh i mean ostensibly i could be um you know because i'm still alive but um you know i feel like i'm still an active artist actively trying to do things uh for myself and you know for the scene if if you want to throw me in a scene that's fine um You're right. There are many people who, um, you know, whatever, have uh, difficulties in their life and, you know, it can be uh, a struggle. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to support something that, you know, directly, hopefully directly influences these people to help them get through, you know, troubled times, uh, I'm very happy to do it. And especially here in Chicago, because um, although, you know, I, I guess now when I step back and think about it, I lived here for six years. I love that, you know, and I love coming back here, mm-hmm. uh, you know, all the time. And it still feels like, yeah, my, my, the, the home of my scene or my scene yeah. is my home, you know, kind of thing. Uh, so I'm thrilled to do that. Mm-hmm. I love it. Uh, Paul Barker, if you're watching this, you still have time to get in to see Paul, Pig, Filter tonight at Metro. It's night four of Cold Waves. A fantastic event. A fantastic human being right there, Paul Barker. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you for walking out in the rain <laughs> yeah. to, to do this. this Almost a tsunami, yeah. yeah. It's just it's just kind of a gross Sunday night, so thank you, Paul. Okay. And uh, if you're watching, thank you for watching, and uh, also thank you for listening. Yeah.